after we've seen orthogonal matrices and symmetric matrices, there is one more class of matrices that is really important in machine learning, and that's positive definite or positive semi-definite matrices. So we start with the definition. A matrix A in Rn times N is called positive definite. And sometimes this is abbreviated as PD. If for all x uh, in Rn, x not being 0, we have the property that x transpose Ax is strictly larger than 0. And it is called positive semi-definite um, if this holds with um, a greater or equal sign. So I write positive, maybe I, I write it on top, semi-definite if we have greater or equal. This is the only definition, the only difference between the two. In the one we have a strict inequality and in, in the other definition we have a greater or equal sign. Um, and maybe uh, the, the most important class of matrices that are positive definite um, has to do, I mean, either with Gram matrices or also with covariance matrices in machine learning. Um, but so I first need to make the definition. Uh, I'm talking about Gram matrices now. A matrix A, now I write it for C, n times n is called a gram matrix if there exists a set of vectors v1 to vn in cn such that aij is given as the scalar product between xi and xj. Uh, of course, you can make the same definition in Rn, uh, Rn times n, so this is not restricted to Cn times n. It's just I need to choose here something. And uh, of course, note, gram matrices are Hermitian by the very definition of a scalar product. And if we are similar, si similar, I wanted to write similarly on Rn times n, and then matrices, gram matrices are symmetric. Oops, sorry. Then gram matrices are symmetric. Okay, so far so good. Um, maybe I want to uh, I want to make one notion of caution, um, so some kind of pay attention. Over C, we have that if a matrix is positive definite, it is already automatically self-adjoint, and this is something that we do not have over R. Let me just write it down. Over C, we have that positive definite implies self-adjoint. Self-adjoint over R. This is not true. Not true. And um, I can see it. So there exist um, matrices which are positive definite but not symmetric. For example, um, Example, if you look at the matrix A, which is 1, minus 1, 1, 1. Now, if we want to see sorry, whether this matrix is positive definite, we need to compute x transpose Ax. And if you do that, um, we can just write it down. What you end up is with x1 square plus x2 square. 
And if we are on R, um, this is always larger or equal to zero, if x is not the zero vector. So uh, let me just write it down. So um, on R, and if x is not equal to zero, then this guy is always like this expression is always going to give us something that is positive. So what we have is um, this matrix is positive definite over R, but it's not symmetric. So A is positive definite, but obviously not symmetric. And now what would happen if you would consider the same matrix over C? Um, over C, the same matrix is not positive definite because you can write down an imaginary number such that if you square it, it's something negative. Because here x1 square plus x2 square can be negative. Okay, so this is just one note of caution. Now here's um, a, a, some characterization of what are positive definite or positive semi-definite matrices. And I want to write down this characterization in form of a theorem. Consider A a matrix in C n times n, self-adjoint. Then I want to say that a couple of statements are equivalent. So the first statement I want to make is A is positive semi-definite. And now I want to make two theorems in the same statement sometimes. So I want to make one statement for positive semi-definite matrices and one for positive definite. And I'm always going to write the positive definite part in blue and the other one in black. Okay. So this is, I mean, the starting point, we want to know what is it, what can we say about a matrix that is positive semi-definite? So the first thing we can say is all eigenvalues of A are non-negative. All eigenvalues of A are greater or equal to zero if we're in the positive semi-definite case and strictly larger than zero if we're in the positive definite case. And note these are equivalent statements. So if we know we have a, um, so in C we don't need to say it's symmetric, in, in Rn we would need to say it's symmetric as well. If we have that all eigenvalues of this matrix are larger or equal to zero, then um, this leads to the fact that it's positive semi-definite. And now, um, I can use the third statement relates, the third and also the fourth statement relates the matrices which are positive definite or semi-definite to gram matrices and to scalar products. And the first direction we want to look at is if we're given such a matrix A, then we can use that matrix to construct a scalar product. Let me write it down, the mapping. Um, so it's, we want to define a scalar product. It goes from Cn times Cn to C, which is defined as x, y. I just write A as a notation. Sorry, I need to write it on top as well. So the scalar product between x and y as induced by the matrix A, if you want, is y bar transpose a x. So this is the mapping and the statement is now this mapping satisfies all the properties of a scalar product. Except one, sorry, um, satisfies, now it depends on in which case we are, satisfies all properties of a scalar product except ik, sorry except 
There is one property that it does not satisfy, namely the definiteness that if the scalar product is zero, then the vector also needs to be zero. Except um, if we have x, x, a is zero. Um, maybe except one. I, I write it a bit more clearly so it's really clear what is satisfied. Except one. If x, comma, x, a is zero, this does not always imply that x is zero. Okay, so this is nearly a scalar product, but only nearly because this is the particular property we have, we don't have. And now in the positive definite case, it is really a property, it, it is really a scalar product. So the mapping in the positive definite case, this mapping is a scalar product. And it also satisfies this last property. And now, the, now I have one more statement that is uh, in this row of equivalent statements. Now, if we have, a, um, I can also see the, the gra matrix. So, if I have this matrix A, I can also see it as being the gra matrix of a particular set of vectors. So, I can write A is a gra matrix matrix of n vectors and now in the first case where we are in the positive semi-definite case uh, these vectors do not necessarily lead to be linearly independent and in the positive definite case they are linearly independent. Um, vectors which are not necessarily necessarily linear independent and in the blue case in the positive definite case which are linearly independent okay and this means um, in particular what we have in both these cases we have something like these entries a i j are given as vectors x i x j. So this is what I mean by the statement. And now in one case, these vectors x i and x j are always linearly independent, and in the other case, they're not necessarily independent. Okay. Um, so this is a nice theorem. Let me maybe try to see it on, on one slide. So let us look again. So we say, a matrix is positive semi-definite semi if all its eigenvalues are larger or equal to zero. And at the same time, once we have such a matrix, we can define something that is nearly a scalar product. And the other way around, if we now um, have such a matrix, we can write it, and there are vectors in our space such that the matrix is the scalar product between these vectors. And now the difference between semi-definite and definite is always this greater or equal, um, or rather the greater sign and this leads so positive definite is of course stronger and this leads also to stronger properties then the eigenvalues are strictly larger than zero and we can really define a scalar product and it is a matrix of um, it is a matrix that can be written as a scalar pro product of independent vectors linearly independent vectors this is really um, yet another of these theorems that is really, 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 really important in machine learning in all that has to do with kernel methods. So kernel methods is, is a big field in machine learning. It used to be really popular uh, some time ago and by now deep networks are a bit maybe more popular but kernel methods are still used a lot in particular in fields where we do not have so many data points. So there are different regimes in which you can apply different kinds of learning algorithms. You would apply deep networks in regimes where you have lots of data, but you would still apply kernel methods in regimes where you don't have so much data. And a kernel matrix is a positive definite or a semi-definite matrix. And then you have all these properties. And there is a very tight relationship. The whole power of the kernel approach in machine learning comes from the fact that we can interpret a matrix that is positive semi-definite is a matrix that comes from a scalar product and then we can construct the scalar product in a different space um, and in this way sort of there are lots of miracles that, that occur in this way 
Um, in particular, we make many methods that are linear in the first place, and we can transform them into non-linear methods. And this is all based on this uh, on, on this insight. And then, of course, you can make this even more. Um, you can make this more general in, if you want to state it in infinite dimensional spaces and so on. And this happens all in the later lectures. But for now, this is the basis of this whole approach. I want to mention a last thing regarding positive semi-definite matrices, namely a, a, an operation that is often quite convenient, um, is that we can define something like the root of a positive semi-definite matrix. And let me just write it down. Roots of positive semi-definite matrices. And I formulate it as a theorem. Theorem. Let A in Rn times N be symmetric and positive semi-definite. Then I want to say there exists a matrix, a matrix, and for now I call it B, also in Rn times N. B is also positive semi-definite, such that A is the square of B. And sometimes B is then called the root of A, something like if you would take the square root of A, this is the same as taking the square root of B square, and this would be B. That's sort of the intuition. It's of course a sloppy notation, This is, um, but many people use it. So sometimes a B is called the square root of A. And sometimes, uh, sometimes also denoted as a or b is a to the power one half. Of course, this is really sloppy, and this is a notation I would try to avoid as soon as I don't have a diagonal matrix. For a di diagonal matrix, it's sort of clear what we mean. In general, I wouldn't use this notation, but some people use it. So this is a definition and a theorem, so maybe let us simply see why this is true. Proof. Um, by the spectral theorem, uh, so we have a symmetric matrix here, so by the spectral theorem, we know that we can write um, A in the form U, D, U transpose, where D is a diagonal matrix. Um, um, D is diagonal. And now, because the matrix is positive semi-definite, we know that all the eigenvalues are non-negative. Um, uh, positive semi-definite, we know um, the eigenvalues values are greater or equal to zero. And now, so this matrix so the matrix D looks like lambda 1 to lambda n, a diagonal matrix, and all the lambda E are greater or equal to 0. And now what you can do is you can now define the matrix, um, now define, if you want, the square root of D, which is now the matrix that has the square roots of these entries in the diagonal, square root lambda 1, to square root lambda n. And now you can set the matrix and uh, set B, the matrix B. This is now U square root of D U star. So U star, star always means um, transpose complex conjugate. And then this does the job. Does the job. You can simply try to, to write this down and see why it does the job, but I think it's pretty obvious, you just need to write it down. <laughs>